Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Alexis Stevens. I am a board certified dermatologist with a background in cosmetic chemistry and today we are going to be reacting to fungal acne or pterosporum folliculitis. The reason that I felt the need to do this video is because I saw two patients in my office this week who had irritations from treating what they thought was fungal acne when they indeed actually had traditional acne. Actually, one patient had pomade acne, which is acne of the hairline from hair products, and another patient had traditional acne on the forehead. So I'm making this video because I don't want anyone else to deal with the irritations and setbacks that can happen if you actually use the wrong products because you've misdiagnosed yourself. So the main point of this video is to try and help others avoid any potential complications that can arise from a misdiagnosis. So I just wanted to help you further differentiate between traditional acne and malazesia folliculitis or pterosporum folliculitis. So pterosporum folliculitis or malazesia folliculitis is not a fungus or an acne. It is actually a yeast that colonizes the hair follicle and causes inflammation. Anytime you see the word itis, it actually means inflammation of the word that's in front of it. So it's an inflammation of the follicle and pterosporum or malazesia is actually the name of the yeast that colonizes or causes the problem in the hair follicle. So what you're gonna see is monomorphic papules, meaning that they all look identical, and they're usually on the forehead, can be on the chest or the back, and even the neck, and they're usually deep and associated with a hair follicle. They almost look like larger goose bumps that can be on the forehead, chest, back, and neck. And very importantly, I'm going to show multiple pictures in different skin tones and skin colors because things can look different on different people. So you'll see a scroll going through with different tones and textures of skin so that you really can get a good idea of what this can look like on your skin. So things that look identical, they're all in the same stage and they all look exactly alike. Now, traditional acne is going to occur in multiple different stages. You have a closed comedone known as a white head. You have a open comedone known as a black head, which is just a closed comedone that has been opened up. And now the oxygen has actually created a reaction called oxidation. And therefore, it looks black because it is now oxidized. You also get papules and pustules and cysts with acne. So multiple different stages can occur. When it's all on the forehead, I do understand how it can be misunderstood or misdiagnosed as pterosporum folliculitis, but you really want to take a really close look and look for those comedones to happen. Also, they're not necessarily all in a row because it doesn't have to be directly associated with a hair follicle. Also, if you're seeing things along your jawline like traditional acne, you most likely have traditional acne on the forehead. Here's where the problem comes in. If you put an antifungal on your skin and you don't truly have a fungal problem or a yeast issue, you're going to upset the microbiome of the skin. What the heck is the microbiome, right? Well, it is a happy, harmonious type of community of organisms that live on your skin. Yep, you got organisms on your skin. You've got good bacteria, you've got bad bacteria, you've got good yeast, you've got bad yeast, you even have mites and viruses on the skin. Well, if you come and you wash out one colony of a certain type of organism, you leave room for a possible potential of a bad bacteria or a bad organism to kind of go over and recolonize that area. Using the wrong treatment products can have a profound effect on the microbiome of the skin. You can actually cause a microbiome imbalance. So if you swipe out the colony of fungus there, it actually allows room for things like the bad bacteria to grow more, which is why my patient actually saw a worsening of her acne. In addition, nizoral ketoconazole is actually very drying to the skin, which can lead to irritation. And then if you're prone to pigmentation, this would then worsen. Look, guys, I get it. I understand that you want to self-diagnose. Um, I am a physician and I am not supposed to self-diagnose myself or my children, but I find myself doing it all the time. So it's not a lack of me understanding you're wanting to do that. 
And because I know you're going to do it anyway, this is why I wanted to provide this video to at least help you get to the diagnosis. This can be a pretty hard diagnosis to make even in the dermatology office. Sometimes we have to do a skin scraping it doesn't hurt, I promise. It actually just feels like a little scratch where we take a little sample, we put it on a slide and we look under the microscope for these organisms that we're talking about so that we can properly treat you um, based off of your diagnosis. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I would absolutely love to have you as part of my family. Until next time, be well.